Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'll be working on my Eastern White Cedar Forest or Thuja Occidentalis. I did a lot of work to this planting this spring. I repotted the main tree, which is a clump style tree, and I added all the little seedlings around it to create a forest. I haven't done any work to this forest since spring other than just watering it and fertilizing it. I did have the sun shining on the front face of the tree because I was trying to encourage more branching on the front of the main tree in the forest. It was a little sparse at the front, so it's starting to get that. There's some good growth coming towards the viewer, so it, it's not so two-dimensional. It had lots of branches out the back, but it just didn't have a lot out the front. Inside the forest here, there is a T-Rex hiding in there. You can hardly see it. It just kind of blends in nicely with the foliage. So today I'm going to be pruning up the young trees and a little bit of work on the uh, main clump of trees. I'll put the trees on top of my spinning tree bonsai turntable and I'll begin the work. There is a playlist for this tree. I'll put it in the description below so you can follow the progress of this forest right from when the main trees were first collected to its present day. I'm going to start the pruning today by pruning up the seedlings that I added around the main tree in the forest. Right now the branches come right down to the ground and you can't see the trunks of the trees. You can't really see into the interior of the forest at all. It even kind of blocks the trunk of the main tree. In nature, many of these small cedars get eaten by deer, the lower branches. So they're usually quite exposed, the trunks on them, and it's only the foliage higher up that gets the sunlight. So they become, you know, a tall, straight tree in most, you know, cedar groves. So I'm going to start by pruning away some of the lower branches at the front to kind of expose the trunks so you can see in there a little more. At the back of the planting, if I rotate it around, so there's a more of a side view, I'll leave the lower branches lower so it kind of creates a backdrop of green. So in the front you can see in, but there'll be a wall of foliage at the back. That's my intention anyway. I'm starting to get some early morning sunlight on the trees. So I'll begin, I'll, uh, I want a height, you know, a minimum height. So I said before in one of the videos that the scale of the person is probably somewhere about this high. So, you know, a deer can kind of, if it stands up on its hind legs, it can kind of reach lower branches to probably about this high. So some of these lower ones I'll remove like this one here. There, and this one. When you plant seedlings like this, you know, you can't take a lot of foliage off because they're only small seedlings, but as they grow, you can start to remove some of the lower branches because you have foliage up top to support the tree. So I think this is still a bit low for my lowest branch, so I'll take a bit more off there. There, so that really opens it up. You can really see inside the forest now, which is kind of nice. So I'll do the same on these trees. I'll get some rid of some of these lower branches. And again, as I go towards the back, the branches will get lower and lower. So these seedlings, they're about, I think this will be their second or third year. Some are probably three years old, the larger ones, and some are two years old. I love seedlings when you're creating forest plantings because it gives you that variation in the size of your trees that really makes a forest look good. If your forest, you know, if they're all the same size, it can look okay, but it's nice to have a variety of sizes in your forest, young trees, old trees. Now, I'm seeing inside here a lot more. There's a weed on the inside I've got to get rid of out. Wow, I think that was goldenrod. It has quite a root system attached to it or something. It could have been privet too from the hedge. So there's my T-Rex. You can see it growling there. <laughs> Looks 
looks pretty happy. Okay, so that's looking better. Now, I think uh, at the edge of the forest, I'm going to keep the lower branches also because that's usually how they grow near the edge of a forest. They kind of fuller because they get more sunshine and the trees in the interior of the forest, they don't get as much sun, so they, they're more trunk than branches. Okay, so now you can see inside the tree. I'm actually going to remove the T-Rex until I'm finished pruning. A lot easier to see what's going on. So there's the trunk of the main tree. Not too bad. I'm going to remove some of the branches that are coming in towards kind of blocking the view of the trunk here. I'm going to remove those too. So this one right here. Like that. You really see in the forest now, that's kind of cool. A lot easier to water the trees too. It's getting hard to get the watering can in there. You could water it from above, but you couldn't really see, you know, what's going on inside, how well it was watered or anything. Okay, it's looking good. It's looking really good. Just picking out a few weeds here. There's a branch on the main tree here. Let's pull back and have a look at the overall composition. Here's an overall look at the forest now. So, yeah, I really like that, the fact that it's cleaned out and you can see the trunks of the trees very clearly. I like that all the seedlings are perfectly straight. I really like that. It'll be interesting. I, I don't know how high I'll grow them. You can see on this side, the right-hand side, they're already starting to interfere with some of the foliage of the main tree. So I may shorten those. And I'm trying to think, you know, do I want sort of a triangular form to the seedlings? Smaller on the outside and kind of higher in the middle? That's something I'll have to decide. But yeah, I definitely need to prune down the outer ones. They're starting to look very rectangular, you know, straight up the sides here, straight up the side here, and kind of flat on tops. So I've got to get some, some shape to them. It'll kind of mirror the shape of the top canopy, that triangular form up top, which on a cedar is usually a rounded triangular form. So that's where I think I'll go next is kind of pruning the outer trees here down shorter on both sides to kind of give that more of a triangular effect rather than the vertical trees coming right to the edge of the pot which usually never looks very good. So the tallest tree of the seedlings is this one here. So I could have that as the apex of my triangular form for the seedlings or you know the other option is to keep this one is the tallest and prune this one back. However, I kind of like the tallness. There's nothing above it here, really. So I'll grow it up a little higher. The one at the back here, I've got a back branch that's starting to interfere with the main tree, so I'll, I'll reduce that back. Taking the branch tip off. This one too just so it's not growing up into the branches above. And then I think I've got to reduce the height of that. So as you can see this tree is about the same height as this tree, so I'm going to shorten it like that. That shortens it. So I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to prune this tree here. It's getting quite full up top. I'm going to try and get some branch definition. So here I go. Yeah, that gets that tree pruned back to a more compact form. So now, I'm going to prune down the outer trees. I'm finally getting to that. Uh, making those more compact so they're not as tall. So I'm looking for a new leader on this one. So I need something that's maybe fanning outwards. There's a good one at the front here. So I'll make this my new leader take off this whole top so here I go that'll shorten it down quite nicely so there's the top off and you can see how short it is now so a little pruning getting all the branches back under control we'll get this tree in good shape
pinching at the apex here. Again, I'll leave the branches fuller because I only want to be able to see in this part of the forest. The outer edges can stay nice and full and low. There's a few crossing branches here I'll take out just to clean up the tree structure. Even though these trees are small, they're going to, you want a nice structure on them. I think on this one, I'm going to remove the lowest branch at the front because I've got some trees behind that have lower branches. So that'll allow me to view them a little better. Right now, this lowest branch kind of blocks the tree on the edge. So I'm gonna take that lowest branch off. Like that, pull out another weed. Yeah, so that, that looks better. I might even, if you look at that, that tree here, there's one behind it, and both the lowest branches are at the exact same height. So maybe I'll prune off the lowest branches on the one in front, that way it'll, you know, it'll be larger and then the one behind will be smaller. So it'll give a bit of force perspective. So I'll, I'll try that, here I go. Take off these lowest branches. Now, let me have a look. There's a view of it now. So th that looks better. You can see how the lowest branches get a little lower towards the back. Let's go to this side now. So again, these lowest branches are nice, but then I've got trees behind that, it kind of blocks the view of the trees behind. So I'll keep these lowest branches higher at the front and go smaller towards the back. So I'll take off these lowest branches here. It's so nice seeing seedlings turning into trees. It's part of the fun of bonsai. There's a branch going towards the inside here, a low one, I'm going to remove that. Like that. So I'm going to I'm going to start doing some pruning on. There's on this tree here, there's a back branch that interferes with the tree behind it here, so I'm gonna take that off. That's better upright growth I can take off here. Now if I stand back and look at the overall composition I can see the main tree it needs a lot of pruning. Some of the shoots on it are getting quite long so it needs to be brought back a little more compact. Maybe some branches can be eliminated to kind of clean out the design a bit. Now we're kind of getting to some trees around the back here. Not too bad a height actually. Just needs a bit of pruning up, make them more compact, that's about it. I haven't done a lot of pinching yet, but I may come back and uh, kind of pinch all these trees more compact. Okay, so that's pretty good on that side. It's really cleaned up that side here a lot. A little sparse in the interior of this tree but you know with a collected tree all you can do is give it sun and hope something grows in that area which it's getting now so hopefully some of that vigor will come up and I'll get some back budding usually you do on cedars I'm up in the apex now and this this back branch is gaining a lot of vigor compared to the two out front it's getting taller so I think I want to reduce that back. I'm trying to, well, I don't know. It creates a nice profile here. These branches would have to be brought back too, but I can't do that yet until I get some growth in here. So I'll just kind of maybe take it back, make sure nothing's shading out these two front branches here. That's about all I can do. So that gets good light to everything now. Here's a look at the foliage I took off today. Quite a good amount. You can only do so much to the forest at one pruning session. You've got to let it grow back in. Just keep repeating the process, keeping your best branches and slowly over time you get a beautiful kind of refined looking tree. I'm going to come in now and pick away the moss at the base of the main tree here. It's starting to climb up the trunk. 
and obscure the bark. So I'll just use my tweezers and clean it off around the roots. I'll have to come in with the scissors and prune away the tall moss at the front here too. It's getting too thick. So you just prune the top off. Try and keep it green, but sometimes you go, you know, you have to take it down to a point where it gets a little brown, the moss. And it greens up again. Okay, that's, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to place a clump of moss in front of this root here. It might encourage more roots to grow in that area. So here I go. You never know. Roots sure like to grow in moss. So I'll have to be careful that it doesn't start climbing up the trunk, but I think that'll possibly help out the root system. Okay, I think I'm ready to water the forest. Okay, so I'll add a little bit of fertilizer to my water, just a bit, 20, 20, 20. I'm using miracle Grow this year. I can't get plant prod anymore. Mix it up and I'm ready to water. Nice to be able to get in here with the watering can finally. I'm sure the moss will do much better now that it's not all in the shade. I think I achieved my goals with the pruning today. I got all my lower trees, my little seedlings in the forest pruned up and they're looking quite nice, I think. I got the upper canopy of the tree a bit more compact. I got rid of some of the branches that weren't looking so good. So, you know, it's a little step ahead in the right direction, I hope. Let's go in now and take a final look at the planting. It's time now for today's updates. It is going to be a hot day today, hot and humid. Let's check in on the gardenia, see what's going on with that. So it's over in the corner here. Get all the ducks out of the way there. Hello. So here's the gardenia. Oh, I can smell the fragrance. Beautiful, so I've got three good flowers out and the original ones kind of faded away there. Oh, does it ever smell nice though? Oh, beautiful, just beautiful. So it's doing really well and there's lots of flower buds still to come. So that's cool. My little ficus microcarpa, my ginseng ficus here, continues to grow beautifully. All the new leaves are coming in, looking really nice and miniature. Really happy with that, it's looking fantastic. Over here, my jade forest, uh, all the other trees kind of withered away and died. And the main tree was doing really, really well. 
but I've noticed I had it down lower and the ducks ate all the green off it. So I've got it on a higher spot on the bench now and hopefully it'll all grow back in again. My ficus cutting of a cutting here, it's beginning to grow in nicely after its last pruning. You can see that it's getting a bit of a full canopy on top. Yeah, looking really good. My silver maple forest here, I did a rather severe prune on it, leaving just sticks out of the pot, no leaves, and it's all grown back in now and looking quite nice. The leaves are fairly large, which means it had a lot of vigor in the tree. So I'll just let it grow now until fall. It'll lose its leaves and then, yeah, in spring when the new shoots come out, we'll do a bit of pinching and try and, you know, get some branch selection going and just further develop the trees. My black walnut here is growing quite nicely. It was just one from the ground that I put in the pot and I didn't see any growth and kind of forgot about it and a new shoot came up so it's growing rather well now. So that's good. My Natal ficus here, I gave it quite a severe pruning not too long ago, trying to get that umbrella canopy on it. And you can see after the pruning, I've got buds everywhere on it. So that's exciting. So that's, the more buds you get like that, the more choices you have for future branches, which is really good. Yeah, so I'm really happy with that and I can't wait till it starts growing once again. That tree I got from David, uh, it was supposed to be a black walnut, but I don't think it is. Someone wrote in the comments and said it looks more like an ash. So I came out here and had a look at it and yes, it is the ash bark. It doesn't smell like a walnut. Usually if you rub your hand on walnut leaves, they have a really strong smell. So yeah, that is definitely an ash tree, which is cool too. I like ash trees. Yeah, so I do have a walnut on the go, so that's okay. Actually, I have two now. I found another seedling in the yard that I planted and it's doing really well too. So lots of future walnut bonsai and now an ash. I watered all my trees thoroughly last night and it's not even noon yet. And you can see on my black locusts here, the leaves are starting to droop a bit. So I've got to get to watering. So that'll be my next task for today. And then when it gets really hot in the afternoon, I can go inside and edit this video. So that'll be nice. The last updates for today are in the greenhouse. Here's my Sarissa Fotida, or Sarissa, what's it called, Japonica. So it's doing really well so far. No problems. I'm keeping it misted. I've got the fans, the solar powered fans are blowing on it, keep it cool. So yeah, it's really getting the, getting spoiled. So it's looking really good. I can see new growth coming in on, on it already. And it's got a flower over on this side still. Yeah, so I'll just give it a misting now. Keep it misted, help it recover. My Madagascar jasmines over here. Lots of flowers in those. I've got one, two, three out and another four coming. So that's exciting. Makes the greenhouse smell really nicely. My Bougainvillea here, it lost all its flowers, but I see there's more growing in now. And the other one, the light pink one, has got lots of nice flowers on it. So that's pretty awesome. Love the color of them. And the two ficus that were repotted recently, growing like crazy once again, that's good. The Frank Yi corkbark jade cuttings are looking much better. I've got one, two, three, four that are growing really well. Five, that one in that pot. Not much in these ones yet. And there's a couple here that, that one looks kind of withered. I don't think that one's going to make it. But I still have promise for the others. I hope they do well. Over here in the succulent section, I have some new succulents. Isabella brought me some. So there's these ones, which are beautiful color. And she brought them in a nice clay pot she made also. So that's cool. And then there's an aloe over there that I'm hoping grows well too. So yeah, everything else in the little succulent section here is looking really cool. Let me just give them a light mist. That's 
what I do. I just mist them like that twice a day when the sun's out and it's hot. So you can see it kind of brings the color of the, the what are they called again? The lithops. I remember the name of it, lithops. Brings the color out in them. And they seem to like the misting. I haven't noticed any ill effects so far. The little pen pencil cactus is doing really well. It's exciting. Yeah, so hopefully all will do well. There's my Christmas cactus behind there. That's doing really well also getting quite a canopy on it. I've got my cedar clump style forest all pruned up. And that's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <laughs>